All right, so let's start. First topic, market organization and structure. Relatively easier to deal with. First formula is the concept of margin call price. Yes, the formula for margin call price is price at time zero multiplied with 1 minus initial margin divided by 1 minus maintenance margin. So if your price at time zero is 100, let's say initial margin 20% and let's say maintenance margin is 15%, then you would say 100 into 80% divided by 85%. The next one is the leverage ratio. Let's say that there is an asset of 500. There is an asset of 500 and the initial margin given is 40%. So to buy this asset, how much amount will I be required to invest? 500 into 40%, the amount required to be invested is 200. So which means I can purchase an asset of 500 with an investment of 200. Asset divided by amount invested and that would be 500 divided by 200 which would be 2.5. In fact, you don't even have to do this. The moment you get to know that initial margin is 40. That means to buy a stock of 100 you need to invest how much? 40. So 100 divided by 40 will give you answer directly. If you want to use even smarter shortcut, take initial margin and take an inverse of that number have 0 0.40 on your calculator and press 1 by X button you directly get leverage ratio 2.5 okay because it's 1 divided by 0.4 2.5 next one is return on investment okay, so let's say it works like this you have purchased a stock at a price of 100 initial margin was 30 percent by the end of the year this stock has become 100 and let us say 10. You want to find out what is my return on investment. Simply first make a T table like this. On the right hand side say margin account, on the left hand side say equity. You purchased a share of 100. How much did you invest? 30. Now this 100 has become 110. So that's a profit of how much? 10. So on your investment of 30 you've made a profit of 10. So 10 divided by 30 return on investment is 33.33 percent. Now there could be a more advanced version of this question. The advanced version I feel is more likely to be tested. Let's say that current stock price is 100 and you decided that I would purchase a quantity of 1000. After some time the price of this stock has become 140. Initial margin level was 30%. At purchase and sale, you paid a commission of 1000 each, both on purchase and sale. And the last, that the interest charge on the amount borrowed, let us say, is 15%. So how do you deal with question like this? Straightforward, find out what is the amount I have invested. Total shares are 100 into 1000, that's 100,000 or 1 lakh. Into 30%, the amount that I invested was 30,000. However, initially when I purchased the stock, I was also required to pay the commission. And commission of 1000, so your total investment at inception would be 1000. How much profit have I made? I purchased total stocks of 1 lakh. By the end of the year, they are 140,000. So that's a profit of 40,000. However, I have paid brokerage twice, once and second. So minus 2,000 on that front. Also, I would be required to pay interest. So if the margin was 30%, that means remaining 70% was taken loan. So 100,000 into 70%, I have taken loan of 70,000. 70, On that, I will have to pay interest of 15%, which would be 10,500. So we will also reduce 10,500 here. So in the numerator, we will have 27,500. Denominator, we will have 31,000. And that would be a return on investment. 
so the most common trick in this to remember that the commission that I paid on purchase should be a part of your investment in denominator not both the commissions because the next commission you are paying off from profit you are not investing that however the one on purchase you had to pay that from your own pocket so that we will add in the denominator of the formula next one security market indices so again we have to calculate different types of index here price weighted equal weighted market cap weighted so we can remember these formulas in fact not required to remember the formulas but remember certain sequences so this flowchart would be put to use different types of indexes price weighted equal weighted and market cap weighted the sequence in price weighted is step number one to calculate average price of all the securities and then in step number two calculate percentage change in the average price so for example let's say we have security a b and c price 0 is 100 150 and 250 price at time 1 is 120 180 and let us say 300 so first step is to calculate average price so total of these would be 500 total of these would be 600 now either you take average of these prices or you to calculate a ratio directly it, it would be same which means if I say 500 divided by 3 600 divided by 3 and then I calculate percentage change or I simply say 500 and 600 percentage change that's a change of 20 percent and that's your price weighted index so if your original index was 1000 now it would be 1200 if your original index was 5000 now it would be 6000 if your original index was 10 now it would be 12 it would increase by 20 percent in equal weighted index step number one is to calculate percentage change in each of the constituent security and then in step number two to calculate average so for example 100 increased to 120 that's an increase of 20 percent now in this case I have kept everything same so it, it was kind of stupid of me to do that let me change these numbers a little bit let me keep this as 350 100 to 120 20 percent 150 to 180 20 percent and 250 to 350 that's 40 percent total of all these is 80 percent and 80 percent divided by 3 that would be 18.67 percentage please check no no it's wrong 20 25 26.67 percentage so then if your original index was 100 now it will become 126 so in case of price weighted step number one average price step number two percentage change in case of equal weighted step number one percentage change step number two average in case of market cap step number one is to calculate market cap total market cap of all the security and step number two calculate percentage change in market cap straightforward next topic is market efficiency there are no formulas here however we would summarize the key concept of this so the topic discusses about three types of markets weak form semi strong and strong form the weak form market includes all the price and volume data semi strong market includes price and volume data plus all the publicly available information and strong form market includes price and volume data plus publicly available information plus privately available information and because these are the characteristics in case of weak form technical analysis does not work because the price and volume data is already incorporated in case of semi strong 
both technical as well as fundamental analysis will not work and in case of strong form technical will not work fundamental will not work and insider trading will also will not work because the private information is already factored into prices of stocks